It's Mike again with Uptastic. I'm still here today at GoToConf uh, 2013 here in Chicago. I'm sitting down with one of the lead organizers, Creston Thorpe. He is uh, well, one of the leads here, and he hasn't kicked me out yet, so we're doing pretty good. Uh, thank you for sitting down with me, Creston. Uh, well, you thanks know, for having me. I, I interviewed uh, David Badaro when he was, uh, uh, or if I said that correctly, um, but anyway. Uh, I interviewed David when he was first here uh, scouting out Chicago and as, as a possible place for a go-to conf. Well, obviously a lot has happened between then and us sitting here today. Uh, you know, can you tell me a little bit about maybe some of the backstory about how the decision was to finally come here to Chicago? How did you make that decision? And then even more, how did you get involved in, in running go-to conf? Yeah, I'd rather start with the uh, last question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> because we... So, so my company, Trifork, that, mm -hmm. that organizes these things, uh, have, have been doing conferences for many years. Mm -hmm. And we really started it as, uh, uh, you know, initially it was, it was basically <coughs> a way to do our own continuous uh, lifelong development, learning mm -hmm. uh, experience, and of course sharing that with our local community, um, which made it possible. Uh, so you imagine a little small company in a faraway country mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't really that can't really afford to send our employees to some fancy conference abroad. And actually, back then there wasn't really that many good conference. There was I mean, this kind of, kind of industry practitioners conference. There weren't that many. It was mostly either either very academic conferences mm -hmm. or or these trade showy things, which were very like marketing. Yeah, and here's how right. you use our product to so, buy it. It's very expensive. So 15 years ago, there, there were really no conferences in this, in this, middle, mm -hmm. uh, in this middle space. Um, and that's what really the conference we wanted to, to go mm -hmm. to ourselves. Um, and then add to that, we didn't want to put all our employees on an airplane and find them right. to the US or some other place where there was a conference like this. So we, so we figured we'd better make our own conference. Right. Um, was that called GoTo or was it a different conference? Well, the very first year it was called Scandinavian Java Technology Conference or something obscure like that. And then pretty quickly we um, transitioned into calling it JAOO, J-A-O-O. Okay. Uh, because this was, most of what we did back then was Java and we were like a Java, uh, Java shop and so kind of focused around the Kind of the object revolution uh, really happened in in the mid '90s. Mm -hmm. uh, people were really starting to use object-oriented programming big time, right. and Java, of course, was the big thing that, that pushed this. Mm -hmm. So, so J O O Jau was um, was a good name at that point. But sounds like um, there's a few pronunciations. Even your because <laughs> I've heard it called Yao, then you said yeah. Jao and Yao. Yeah, there's <laughs> lots of you know we <laughs> when we opened up in Australia. Uh, we also it, back then it was called uh, also Jiao. Yeah. Um, and the Australians couldn't figure out how to pronounce it, so so down there it was then later renamed to Yao Y O W. Oh, okay. Um, which is really just a d different spelling yeah, of Jiao. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also more generic. Uh, and about the same time we decided uh, to go with the the name Go To mm -hmm. as as a more generic. Uh, well, it, and it also has a nice. Uh, play on go to Chicago, go no, to go to wherever, yeah. wherever, yeah. And it and it makes me the go to guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you are the go to. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. No. Very, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what I find really uh, conferences is it's a great way to meet people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, organizing conferences uh, is fun. It's a great way to meet people in a in a positive uh, vibe. Right. Uh, both. Uh, Customers, uh, business partners, uh, um, because you meet in this kind of learning environment where where things are new and exciting. Right. Uh, and you see you things you don't necessarily work on. Exactly, you see things you don't necessarily work on. It's um, it's it's a good way to kind of broaden your scope and be on be on top of things, right? So. Um, so in, in, in many ways, it's uh, there's so many positive things about it. You're, it keeps 
I mean, being the organizer, of course, uh, we we put a lot of effort into figuring out what is uh, the what are new trends, what are interesting trends. Mm -hmm. It it provides an excellent way to meet new people, uh, and, and of course, it's a challenge to continue to to be to be on top. So, right. right. So that's the the big challenge in in driving conferences like this is to you know we always have to be like a couple of years ahead of everybody right. else. How do you stay ahead of the pack in terms of what's what's news and what what's happening? And of course, you can't do that yourself. Right. Uh, so, um, so it's a matter of figuring out how do how do you make other people help you figure out what what is the next big thing or right. what's what, what's going on. Well, it sounds like there's a challenge because one of the things I noticed that's unique is you invite speakers. Other conferences will do open calls for speakers, and it sounds like it might actually be more burdensome to have to invite because you have to figure out. Okay, you have to have really deep knowledge about who's who and what and what they know in different domains. That's right. I mean, it's it's in that sense, it's very much it's it's quite a lot a top down conference, right? Yeah. We, so we have every uh, once a year we have a meeting where um, where we bring together kind of an advisory board or program committee uh, for for all our conferences. Um, so we have like. Different people coming every year, but typically we'll meet between between eight and ten people um, over a weekend, um, and basically just brainstorm on new topics. And the people we bring there are you know, speakers that have been to our conferences for some years, and then that kind of forms a, a pool of ideas or topics and speakers that we can we can draw from um, okay. over the next year. So you you lean on a lot of. You built a conference and then you should build up a network and then you start to tap that own network to find out, okay, what are you guys interested in? And let's exactly. curate a, a nice list of speakers and topics. Yes. So um, so of course that's uh, you have to kind of renew that. You have to uh, figure out a way to, you know, not always invite the same people to organize that without offending the ones that don't get to go. Right. Uh, and um, at the same time, keep some continuity so that you know there's this kind of a shared understanding of the level mm -hmm. of the, the angles we want to push, and we and we tend to you know really like uh, uh, like deep technical things, uh, things that have uh, like historical root and value. We often bring in like um, old guys that invented stuff many years ago, right. uh, like historical perspectives. Um, Practical applications, but it's yeah. So it's there's a lot of different things that kind of weigh in uh, on 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 that kind of decision making. Um, so, but yeah, it's uh, it's you know it's 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 surprisingly challenging to 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 keep pushing the envelope right? mm -hmm. uh, and to keep finding. Uh, Finding interesting stuff, but of course it's it's a lot of fun to be in the middle of this right. game like that. Also, and also I, I think it's funny when you mentioned that you wanted to have a conference that satisfied what you wanted from a conference. You didn't want to have to ship people off overseas to be able to attend a conference. Now you have a company that runs conferences, and you're shipping those people overseas to run the conference. It, well, that's is it was uh, is that been uh, like a did it. Has this has this taken off in a way you didn't expect it? I mean, has well, there's that a couple of things about running stuff? conferences. One is, um, you know, the, the 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 really good speakers, uh, you know, they have something interesting to say. They typically go more than one place to say it, right? right. So we, you know, we, we find some really good speaker, they would and they put a lot of effort into doing a nice mm -hmm. presentation. Um, they would most likely want to go in. Different places okay. uh, and give the same presentation or similar presentation, um, and uh, you know. So why not those other presentations also happening on, on one of our conferences? Right. So we, I mean that kind of makes sense. The, um, uh, the other thing is the audience for conferences. That's what we find tend to be uh, fairly local. Uh, a typical we see, um, like. Between sixty, at least sixty percent, an order of sixty percent. Of course, it varies, uh, but an order of sixty percent local attendees. Right. Um, 
and that's of course because it's it's much uh, less expensive and more flexible to go mm -hmm. to a conference near to where you live. Right. Um, you can go home and sleep at night. If your employer suddenly needs you, you can you're, get back. You can yeah. get back. Uh, it's not the fix huge an emergency. It's not the same huge commitment. There's not you know, travel, hotel, and mm -hmm. all kinds of things uh, going on top. So, um, so attendees tend to go to their local conferences. Right. Um, so, uh, so that was. Then, then there's also this kind of an economy of scale in uh, in running more than one conference because it, uh, to turn it into a professional organization, mm -hmm. you need you need work to do around the year. Right. If you only only run one event mm -hmm. uh, a year, maybe that's um, that's not enough work for for somebody to do all year, or uh, uh, at least not. You know, because when you actually run the conference, you need, I don't know, five people to run a conference. Okay. Uh, uh, to organize it, and like, like here, I think we're in, we're in that order of maybe two people. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't keep five people busy for an entire right. year to, to do a conference. So, you, so it makes sense to have more conference. So, so you, you kind of have a professional team that does that well. You have a core team that goes and runs all the conferences across? That, the yes. Okay. And uh, so... So you have like a central office somewhere, and they work from there, and then they just travel around as conferences occur. Or how do, how does that planning happen? How did how do you? Well, we have well we have a number of offices, um, and typically, you know, we have people working in, in in different offices that are that are part of it too. So we have um, uh, there's people in uh, in. In the Aarhus, Denmark office, okay. uh, London, Amsterdam, Zurich, uh, and in San Francisco, that are okay. kind of part of the conference team, and um, and Poland also, uh, and they, you know, travel to they all they don't all go to all the conferences, okay, but because there's so many going on. If you, you see our list, there's yeah, uh, you're all over the globe. We all over the globe. We have I don't know order of ten large conferences like this mm -hmm. a year. And then, um, and many like one day events of okay. various kinds. We also have like, go nights. Yeah, yeah. There, there's lots of, of like tech nights, go to nights. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also one day one day conferences on specific topics, kind of similar to a track at one of our conferences. Oh, okay. that we just Like one day conferences we, in Europe, we're doing these NoSQL days, which is just a single day with like various NoSQL topics. Yeah, single single track, smaller conference. Smaller conferences, and we also um, use the organization to run conferences for other companies. Like we're, uh, we've been doing, uh, we've been doing some of the Spring Source conferences, uh, okay. the Neo Neo for Day, um, New Technologies conferences. Um, oh, so you work with some specific technology vendors to, to help run their conferences. So you you have, uh, and this is more of a question, even though it sounds like a statement. You, so you have uh, GoToConf, but also Triforce does some Basically conference com organization. Yes, as a, like a as a business. As a business. Okay. Yeah. So we also do that, and then and then there's a number of different brands, which really they, they different really reflect different partnerships that we're doing. Uh, so we also uh, part of the QCon conferences okay. uh, that we're doing with uh, InfoQ. Uh, so that's kind of partnership with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're involved with. Um, Dead Thomas's of the other conferences. Right. Um, so there's a number of different things going on. And that, that really means that we can keep a professional organization for running conferences. Um, uh, so you have things just going on all the time with conferences. This isn't, yes. you know, that a lot of times when we look at a conference, we're thinking, oh, it's just a once a year thing. But really, when there's a company like yours behind it that's coming, it's just running, you're, you're more like an events company than, you know, just. Well, but it's. And yeah, well, conferences is um, is a lesser part of our business, right? You know, and and, and you know, what I think part of what makes our conferences unique, uh, I think, is that um, is that we're really a software company, and and we, you know, the what drives us uh, to the topics and and to the content in general is what we would like to see as as a software company. Okay. Um, so my. My day job is uh, as a CTO in the software shop. Oh, okay. We have 300, we have 300 people, uh, and there's, there's maybe, out of those 300, there's 10, 15 doing 
circumference organization. Okay. Um, that was what I was uh, one of the things I was going to ask is when you first started saying, "Oh, I want to launch this conference to satisfy my own vision of what a conference should be." Did this eventually replace your previous business focus? But it sounds like it, it hasn't. No, no. This is a venture that you're on, not. This isn't replaced the original business. No, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way, being a software company, to continuously renew our not knowledge. And it, mean, it really means that we can, we can, as a software business, we can continue to be mm -hmm. on top of things and do the newest things. Um, we're, just like we were early with Java, and, but that was just kind of predated uh, the conference. We've you know, a number of times been, uh, you know, been fortunate because of this to be part of new things happening. Um, so we, uh, it, it's a constant source of, of inspiration and new business opportunities and new technologies that we can, you know, we can see and evaluate uh, and, and sell to our customers. Right. Um, so, um, so it gives us a good footing uh, as a kind of high profile technology mm -hmm. um, software shop. Interesting. So this is, a, this is definitely one of those uh, don't quit your day job kind of things. You, you, you're doing this kind of on the side to help support and, and, and do some interesting stuff, but you kept the core focus of the business, and this is a, it built to expose what your company is and then also satisfy some of your own training. Needs yeah, we design. actually don't. We, we, we're quite careful not, not promoting tri fork the company at, at our conferences. You okay. Know, because you don't want to turn this into a tri fork world. Uh -huh. Right. Um, because that would that would make it sound like Java Java, Java World or whatever, uh, like yeah. like a marketing marketing like thing, which is you know, much more indirect aspect of the conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the core focus once you're at a conference, of course, is you know transferring interesting knowledge from the speakers uh, to the attendees, and and you know you know when you run a um, high quality conference, you also tend to uh, I often hear this from the speakers that. That uh, that the kind of attendant attendees that are attracted to these conferences mm -hmm. also tend to be high quality, so they really enjoy the interaction um, with attendees and the questions yeah. and you know the stories and the issues and whatnot that, that, that attendees have. Um, so this is good for for speakers as well as the attendees. Of course, um, I mean um, a good quality conference is one where the speakers want to go. To see the sessions right. and to interact with the people that are right. at the conference. Sorry. Yeah, it's always um, a telling thing whether they bolt after the session or they stay and they, they talk and hang out and, and get to know everybody. Yeah, you often see this at at, at, at many other conferences that the, the speakers will tend to fly in just for the talk and then yeah. they're they're off again or they'll go to the speakers lounge. I don't know. If mm -hmm. Here at our conferences, we explicitly don't have speakers lounge, uh, so we don't want this, the speakers to kind of. Escape into their little special area right. where it's uh, where it's like a VIP area right. or something like that. Uh, we, want, we want it to be be visible and part of the part well, of the event. And all that champagne and, and caviar is really expensive. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a we do typically have like a speakers dinner, or, yeah. you know, with um, where we typically invite um, you know also typically we have volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, CS students or user group participants or whatnot who want to come help. Uh, it's 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 always good to have some extra hands right, at a right. conference like this for checking badges or helping with running errands or various things at the, at the conference. Um, yeah. And one thing is, is people that are going to be watching this who you know run their own smaller conferences or, or just interested in how things go, and I, and myself even included. You know, I remember when Dave came and he was just kind of scouting out Chicago, getting to know the community, talking to lots of people. Um, I'm, but I am curious as some of the decision, not not just for Chicago, but what is what is some of the, how do you decide on and evaluate a, uh, a location, uh, and then make a final decision that yeah that's a place we want to try to be hosting a conference at, or is that a trade secret? <laughs> There's no special secret in that, and and and, and it's not. It's not very scientific at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, typically, it's uh, it. I mean, we we get requests to run our conferences everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so typically, it's uh, it's a matter of like personal relationships. Uh, typically, we know people in that area. 
Uh, we um, are we like the area. We, we want to go there ourselves. Right. Uh, so it's all kinds of subjective matters also. But of course, a strong um, user group group community. One of the things is we we're not we're not actually very good at marketing these things. Right. Um, and and like regular marketing is very expensive. So we tend to run the marketing by, you know, kind of lean, very lean means, right. and um, and indirectly via user groups and running our go-to nights and, mm -hmm. and these kind of community-like efforts. Um, so having something like strong user, local user groups to to uh, to help us um, uh, bring up the message is, mm -hmm. is really valuable. Uh, so that's definitely important when when selecting location whether we we think that um, there's somebody there that can help us mm -hmm. bring out the message and get um, kind of uh, get the message to the potential attendees so if I'm in a city and I'm looking at this video and I'm like oh I you know I think my city has has some unique value that would be great to host a, a go to comp how, how could somebody go about getting in contact with with somebody from from the go-to conf and talking with them and figuring those things out. Well, it's we're typically easy to find. You know, we're all, we're all over all over right. the world in our conferences, right? Uh, so you, I mean, everybody welcomes to come and approach us. Okay. Um, I mean, there's nothing uh, nothing special about that. Okay. Uh, um, there's no specific like if you'd like to host a go-to conf, this is the forum and. You have to have this and this and this and this qualifications. Mm, no, but I mean, to really, uh, you know, no, no. I mean, that's uh, that's all very subjective, and uh, you know, comes from talking, uh, knowing people, you know, and I mean, and everybody's welcome to ask us. And you know, just our final question is: having run so many conferences, what is there any advice you have for somebody who's Running a conference, maybe a two to three hundred percent conference, for things that they should think about or be aware of that maybe were surprising when you first ran a conference that you've learned. Has there been any particular things that might stick out in your mind? Is like this was something I didn't expect, but over the years, doing X, Y, or Z is is really improved the quality of the conference. Or, or one particular thing. Yeah. It's difficult. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's important to uh, it's important to make it worthwhile. For, I mean, think of this. Think of the speakers. Maybe mm -hmm. I mean uh, it's important to make it a fun thing to go to for the speakers too. I think I think that's if there's one thing, one piece of advice right. is of course it's important. For, uh, and the conference is not run for the speakers. Right. Right. But 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 that. Because want to come there and, and enjoy being there, uh, do something for the speakers um, and think about that. Uh, so I think that's impo that's important because that's like the seed that that's like the the core that drives all the other good effects. Okay. Um, so if you take care of your speakers, your users are going to be having a higher quality conference and bringing speakers back year after year. Exactly. You know, it's like you you want to be in the positive rumor mill of. The Kind of the yeah. speak the the speakers tend to know each other, right? Uh, right. You know, across conferences. So you, so you want to have you know a good rumor going that ooh, that's the conference you yeah, want to go to. Yeah, that's what we go yeah, to. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down, Kristen. Oh, you welcome. Appreciate it, and I appreciate you letting me do the interviews here too. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks.